Hey there, and welcome to another tutorial on our set meshes. So we're going to work with Fluent and since Fluent to introduce some concepts that we introduced in previous videos, you know, basic standard practice. And so also, if you haven't seen that video or the previous video, I invite you to, to follow those videos, to watch those videos, because there we introduce some concepts that now we're going to, to work with. So basically, we're going to work in the cylinder case, the case that we know and we love. Okay, we can do I know, a lot of things with this case, but our level of complexity is three component grids okay it seems simple but you need to to be aware of a few things uh then later we're going to put things into motion no that it, those are the cases where you should use you no know, overset meshes when the body is fixed as i already mentioned and i stress that a lot do not use overset meshes because they add an extra level of complexity and requires no a completely new way of thinking. So basically this is what we're doing and this is Fluent and let's launch Fluent. Okay, so now we do it in Fluent. Later we move to in the next tutorial to open for and we do a comparison solution. Uh, computing time, but also how to set up the case. And I want to start with Fluent because in Fluent it give you give us more flexibility. So just to show you a few things that are not available in OpenFun, and that is you now the big drawback in OpenFun. But hopefully in future developers will, will will add those actions. So basically, let's run Fluent. And I want to stress that if you are a Windows user, just and well, Windows user, Linux user, and you are using those Intel hybrid processors, run as administrator, otherwise it will be super slow because for some reason, Windows is pinning this process fluent to the efficiency cores, which are, which are slow. Okay. So here we have the case and now let me go and have it here. So it's still exactly the same geometry to point out that the geometry, what the mesh was generated using the snappy X mesh. And then I ex export it to, to Fluent and we're using the same idea, 3D meshes, but then just one mesh cell in the source dimension. Okay. Same we can do here in Fluent. So 3D case, double precision, choose the maximum number of scores that you can use or allow for the license or so the students. Student license, I think it's four core. So, and then we start here. Solution, nothing else to do. Okay, now I'm inside Fluent. Let me close here. And to remind you what we're going to do, just simple this simple case. We have three component meshes and we want to assemble this. So it's very important how do we read the meshes in Fluent, in particular in Fluent. So we need to read first the background mesh or the one that I call here. Also the background mesh is the mesh that is going to take the information from all the component uh, meshes. So let's go here. You go into file, read mesh, and you know, you created the meshes, you know, your mesh, you no know, assembly. So I know that I need to use background mesh already call it here and let me load these two meshes I will load the background fine just to show you something okay and then the background course the one that we're going to to show you but this is just to to revisit some previous concepts okay so I load my background mesh and remember the idea will be this that you have here edge and you have this Okay, so this is the background, then you start to throw in more meshes. Uh, also to remind you that in Fluent, you can do like an open phone. So you have a 3D case, but you define this here as sym symmetry, symmetry, and that's all, and it will work the same. Okay, and what I wanted to do now, so just to show you, let me load. So remember, you load your background mesh, and then you start to add a pen mesh. So let me append this one, okay. And now let me append also refinement sound. Okay. And uh, let me append also this at the end. So here you can put in as many meshes as you like. To my knowledge, there is no limit in the number of meshes. So look at, remember the order how I, I load things. So the first one was this. Okay. Then the second one, it was the quartz one. So look at that. When you keep adding and in the measures that you are adding, you are using the same name. 
Fluent automatically is going to add this dot one dot dot one. Uh, or if you load in a new mesh with different names, it will load that name. So it's up to you. Okay, so I like to keep sense now uh, common word. So in all my component mesh, I use the same name. It's up to you. But when you read here, okay, to plot or to do whatever assemble under a condition, remember that the dot one dot one one dot one 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 is the number how you read those meshes. So now if I go here, it will be the refinement sun and the one 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 will be the cylinder mesh. So this is very important, okay, to remember. And basically what I want to show you here is that this was the previous case that we did. So look at that, we generated the mesh, the cells are matching. So in Fluent, there is a method node to compute this one to get you know, the closest node, the interpolation. When you have multiple bodies in a more complicated case, we're going to see that it, that interpolation you know, is going to match you know, the cells that are in common, but there is another method you now that is the, in this distance. So in another case, we see that. And this is what we have, okay? It's perfect, but then, you can add a refinement zone. So in this case, a refinement zone. So in this case, it doesn't make any sense because the refinement zones have the same area or volume of the background mesh. But the idea here is that now let's add a quartz mesh because we know that that this quartz, this finer mesh is, is expensive. So this is the idea when you are generating meshes now that you want to reduce cell count. So that's why it requires a completely new way of thinking. So you have to be aware of this. Also remember to put your overset boundaries you know, far from walls to avoid strong, gra strong gradients, but influence things are done automatically. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. And let me do something here and let me delete this one. Okay. I'm not going to use this one was the first one that I, I read. So I have my three meshes and now let's do let's assembly now let's create our overset mesh so i know later i'm going to revisit this but right ahead we need to go to boundary conditions okay and here in boundary conditions you need to define so you know that back as i mentioned this one will be symmetry and so on but it's important let's focus in overset so this one you know in in fluent as with open font you have a specific patch so define those patches okay uh, and then the rest you can set here. Then remember walls are used to cut holes. If you don't have walls, you are not going to cut a hole in your mesh. There are ways to do that, but you said you have a wall there. So it's important to define your walls also. And you know that this wall is going to cut a hole in there. And then is one, you can change all these, the ones that you think are symmetry or inlet, no according to what you what you want to do. I'm not going to do it. I don't need it in this case. And now the next step that you define these over, overset patches, we go to overset interfaces. And here's where we initialize that interface. Now we're telling, okay, let's do an overset mesh. So you give it a name. I will call it OV1 Kenobi. Is you get you now the reference to Star Wars. But in case so see that background mesh and this is very important background mesh fluent one one fluid one one i know that this is the quartz mesh and this is very important because the first mesh that you read here should be would be here in background mesh or the next that you read here okay so be careful about this you need to know how you are reading and well you know that now this index one 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 re re is <clears throat> Uh, refers to the order how you read it. So for me, this is okay. Create, and we have our overset set there. Uh, in theory, I think you can create multiple overset interfaces. Honestly, I haven't done a case where I need it and I have done com complex cases, but yeah, you can add different ones, but you have to be careful that these songs cannot, ca cannot be in the same, uh, overset interface, at least the component songs cannot, cannot, cannot be part of the, of different interfaces, uh, probably the background. I, I haven't checked it, but in any case that I haven't done that. I honestly, there is no case that comes to my mind where I need to do that. Okay, and that's all. We have the case defined, and now we can compute the overset interface. We can see what Fluent is computing. To do that, uh, you need to initialize the solution. Okay, so just go here, do a simple initialization. And when you do that and check here your window, 
okay, your text user interface is telling you that how it's computing and everything. And at this point, let's visualize our mesh. So if you look at here when you select mesh, here you have this option. So this is part of the visualization, as I mentioned. Visualizing these measures is, is not easy. So in Fluent, they added this option to make things easier for you. In open phone, it's a little bit tricky. And this is what we have. Okay, our beautiful mesh here. And look at that compute the whole, everything perfect. Okay, so this is the whole that has been optimized. And as we study, as we saw in our previous video, that this is a problem with open phone that they are trying to solve here. But here in Fluent, it works really, really well. Okay. And you have different techniques. So this is what we have. And to show you another option, because we have three component meshes and just to bring, bring back something here. So as you read here, I see that you have different ID 18, 22, 28, whatever in cell zones, and this can be our grid priorities. It's important to define grid priorities. In this case, it's not very important, but you can control this, the, 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 this uh this uh metric no degree the grid quality which cannot be done in open and let me show what happens when you choose different grid priorities so fluent automatically it will try to to find all you know, the best option and many times work but there are some cases where things get complicated that you need to select those priorities and or do another some other operations manually so remember that in fluent here in the bottom you have this is the text user interface you no know, a command line interface so here you can control scenes that are not accessible in your user interface, or at least I don't know where you can access some, some of those complex options. But if you go into define, and here you will see that you have a specific one for overset. So you need to put the complete name you know, as you have. You put the first letter and automatically we go there. And here you have many options. I'm just going to talk in this case about two options, grid priorities, and then as you go into options, optimize minimize overlap but there is many more, more stuff maybe maybe i will address those so probably i think uh, in another video will address this one but there, there are many options so i invite you to read the documentation so if we go here and i type minimize by default it's always minimizing that is okay getting the overset patch far from the walls so let me disable this option to show you what happens. We already saw that in a previous video, but just to revisit this and go there. And this is, okay, remember that you need to initialize always here and save display. And there you go. So look at that, you have your holder. So it has them been optimized. So by default here in, and in ANSYS Fluent, it is enabled. In flu and open phone, you have the option recall use layers that layers that you need to define that. So we have it there, and this is the effect. Okay, in this case, it is doing this hole here. Also, we have another hole in the in the other mesh. And actually, let me show you. Look at that. The other one. Okay, the refinement zone is computing a big hole here. Instead, let's see what is happening actually here. So play around with this option. You, you can get an idea of what is happening in this allies. Okay. So here and see what is happening here. So now the wall is caught in a hole in the background mesh, but it's not maximizing all this surface. So it's not covering this a whole area. No, it's not removing all these cells in the backgrounds as in the previous one. So let me now show you what is happening or oh, minimize. Yes, initialize. We go here, I hide this one, and look at it different. All these cells were removed. Okay, the optimizer in Fluent will tell you, okay, I don't need these cells. I already have my minimal distance here with the overset boundary that's somewhere there. We should see it. Okay, I don't see it there. Okay, so there you see. It. There you go. You have the overset boundary. And then it's minimizing that distance there. So this is what is missing now. This automatic algorithm in OpenFund. So somehow you still need to control it manually. I will show you in this tutorial in OpenFund that you can do it manually. You can carve your hole manually using mesh modification tools 
or you can also modify the source code. I did, you know, a little bit, you no, know, like using a hammer. It worked, but it's better to have something implemented properly. Okay, so let's say that I'm extending too much, explaining this basic concept. And the other one that I want to show you, let me go back here, is grid priorities. So as you type here, grid priorities. You're going to define, okay, you have our set interface, we have just one, and then background mesh always should be grid priority zero, okay? So see that you have an ID there, pay attention that that ID will be our index to visualize later these ones, now like the index in OpenFun. So I put there zero, and look at that now, component sum fluid 1111. I know that this is the cylinder, and let me put it now one, okay? So kind of if in front of zero, which is the background, and then fluid 111, I know is this refinement. And let me put it the higher number two. So basically what is going to happen, and the best way to under, understand what is going to happen there is just by recomputing that. And save this play, and this is what is happening. So you see that now you are putting meshes in different order, and you have different priorities there. And there is a completely new way of computing that whole. This cannot be controlled in OpenFone, okay? In OpenFone, you don't have this, this flexibility to control priorities that in many cases can be very important when you start to have complicated assemblies. So as a user also, you should, con you should be able in OpenFone to control that, but you don't have that control. In OpenFone, you have it. And remember, always check what you have because sometimes it's not, you always not get the same, no? The same mesh. So in this case, this is not the ideal one. We should go back to the other grid priority. So most of the time, Fluent will compute it automatically. You have some experts options that you will see there that compute things automatically and it works. Okay. But if you see strange results, you can and you get you no, know, you manually check that. So two highest priority, lowest priority, the background. Remember, I know my index. Okay. The order high important. And if I initialize, and there you go, optimize all. And this is what is happening. And now, okay, we're going to run and since we'll get interesting when we put this into motion, it's when we need to use open from here, it makes no sense because we have seen that one a single block mesh is way much faster. But when you put this into motion, this is where things get interesting and this model becomes very, very attractive. So let's run the case. There is a lot to do in this setup that I'm going to revisit, but let me read. Re re so I will share now this case also in the video description. You have the, the link with all the meshes that you can set up everything from scratch, but also the predefined case that I have everything defined here. So I just want for this tutorial only to revisit now what we have done for those that are not familiar with open phone, with Fluent, sorry. And I also will do it with open phone, but just one time. So in general, general, uh, auction. So we're going to run a transient simulation. We're going to use pressure based solver state with that models here. You refine all the models. So in this case is the classical cylinder to drain us 200. So we go laminar. Okay, laminar, remember, it doesn't mean that the flow is actually laminar. It means that you are not using any turbulence model. So in theory, this is, this is DNS. But it's up to you if you want to put a turbulence model there. Materials, you define your working materials. So by default, fluid always use air, but you can change this. So here, using no incompressible flow. So we can use this and a lot of dynamic similarity and density one, viscosity is 001, velocity at the end is one, the diameter of the cylinder is, is, is two, so we get a range of 200, so it's okay. Solid, this is, we don't need it. This is only when you have conjugate heat transfer or a structural computation, so you have a structural solver. So here we don't need it, so use the default values. It's going to ignore that. So here you don't need to set up anything, but just to show you that here you can add source terms and stuff like that. And if you have multiple materials, here is where you choose the material and so on to apply in that specific zone. So in this case, everything is standard. Then boundary conditions, very important. So in this case, I started to do, we have the proper definition and let me open the mesh. Okay, so this is what we have. We have inlet, outlet, we have the seal, which is the wall, and we have those three patches there. So here we have our inlet. So here you define velocity, let me go, a velocity inlet, so you have many boundary conditions, it's up to you, you are the one giving physical sense, so this is extremely important. Now you need to know these boundary conditions in order to, to give proper sense to the simulation. So velocity inlet, velocity 
let me click here one and what i want to show also stress here that you see that there is no particular option for overset meshes when it comes for inlet outlets walls and so on it's only the overset patch so you don't need to care about that when you define those quantities then this is automatically set in table cells so you need to do anything there pressure outlet we define a pressure outlet and same idea remember you don't need to do anything for overset patches or so lift those values these are the overset patches also just selected you don't need to do anything there and then all these back from top bottom is the symmetry not to give this uh to create the the, the 2d case using this 3d geometry or mesh you know with one cell in this direction and in top and bottom walls i put symmetry so we don't have boundary layer but you also can add there a wall and then you can define zero shear uh, shear stress now you can do this sense but you have to be careful and something on that now you go here specify put it zero and that's all but remember walls can cut a hole in your mesh when using overset meshes so be careful that if you put a wall inside you might cut a hole or if you don't want to cut a hole you use a symmetry or or, or something else okay so be careful about that have that in mind in our case symmetry is okay so now that we have all boundary conditions okay overset interface we already talked about that okay you create it there we have our all we want can all be there and that's all nothing to do here this is when more advanced later when we put the body into motion we're going to enter here likely but there are different ways to put that body into motion reference values this is just to normalize quantities okay so i put here the frontal area velocity and that's all okay so to compute coefficients i don't need to do with in this case we don't need to do anything here nothing here nothing here now we move to solution so as you see it's a vertical approach you go from top to bottom methods and in methods i want to use something similar to open phone okay so i want to compare apples to apples so i'm trying to get something close to open phone so is this is the is the iterative piece of Call pimple and open phone. So I would use something similar. I will try to get as close as possible, but here you have different numerics. Okay, so open phone is very rich in numerics. So you have this amazing couple solver, but for transient problems, it's not recommended. And just historical fact in Fluent, uh, it used to be the overset solver. The only option that used to have it was couple so it was it is very robust but it's bloody slow so in i think it was this year or last year they they added this support to uh to segregated solvers uh controls send us no on the relaxation factors nothing to do here and here reports you create your report definition okay so these are these three are created by default i created this one so cd CL, you no know, drag coefficient, lift coefficient, maximum CFL number. So I show you here two ways to compute. And just to remind you how to do there. So right click here, new, and then you have a complete menu here of function object or of uh, reports definition, metrics, monitor, function object, whatever you want to call it. So you pick up one and that's all. So if you want to compute, like let's say a force, go there, leave select where you want to compute so forces usually only walls so it's going to expose only the walls then reference access all this stuff if you want to plot it save to file so be careful to set up that or for instance you want to compute let's say a surface quantity an average so just facet average select the region and what you want to compute so see that you're accessing all quantities so it's up to you here i just put this one that we're going to use here and we're going to compare with Fluent you know, using CLCD. And also we're going to see the CFL number that we get for a fixed time step because both solvers have a different way to compute the CFL number. This is interesting. We're going to see that. Uh, nothing to do here. The rest is, is perfect. These are created automatically. Uh, then this is interesting because we already saw that in previous videos that I added here, no kind of, I changed the direction of the, of the flow somewhere here just to unset the stability faster. So here you can create a region. So right click new region. There are different ways to do it. This one is a region and this is how I create it. So select a box. So this will be sack fields in open form. And inside this box, I want to put something. What will be something later? We're going to define that, uh, nothing to do here. 
here. We initialize the solution. So remember, this is an initial value boundary with condition problem. So we gave the boundary conditions. Now that we're almost ready to run, uh, we give boundary con uh, initial conditions. So here you initialize everything inside this box like this, and then let me patch my solution, set fields for those that are more familiar with OpenFont. Select the region. This is the region that we created here. See that have that name, you can change that name. And then say that this velocity, I wanted to patch it with this. And this one, I want to patch it with this. The others are okay, but it's the one you can also apply the patch. And there you go. This is how you patch or do your equivalent set fields. And now when you visualize here, and let me visualize just uh, bam, 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 there. There you go. So this is what we have a straight. And then you add this vector node can change the direction. And this will unset now the instability of the phone carbon straight. And that's all at this point we're pretty much ready to run before running. Always I recommend you like an open phone, give a saving frequency. So runtime parameters. So there are many options. So important that we're in this point, we're going to when running with open phone, we're going to get as close as possible to do no, uh, a fair comparison be, be, between both. So we're going to have same save, saving frequency, uh, same monitors and so on. So here I'm saving my solution every same 100 uh, times then and just keep the latest two, okay? But this is not going to change much the, the, the computer in time. In open phone, I will keep everything, but doesn't matter that it doesn't this, the data that you leave in your hard drive doesn't save much your computing time, but this every frequency, yes. And at this point, we're ready to go. So always remember, save all this stuff. So in this case, save case and data. I'm not going to click there. And then these are the parameters that we're going to use. So here you have many options. So I'm not going to into details. This is what you are interested in. Your time step, 0 0.025. We're going to run 4,000 time steps for this. So that will be queued into 100 seconds. And five iterations. So this will be the outer loop in open phone. So if it reach, well, actually you can put 20 there. Okay. Because I know that this one, it, it stops. So 20 will be pretty much how you can see in the pimple loop in open phone. So it will stop in one, two iterations and we're ready to go. Then later, no more advanced stuff. You can do your statistics, but for this moment, let's do, let's skip since basic. So now I will keep here. I will click here and off you go. It's computing the solution. And there, look at that. It's running. And I see that at the beginning, it's taking many iterations to converge, but then it's converging like in two, three iterations. Okay. So same concept that in open file. And this is an advice that I want to give you also. So usually when you have this iterative method, this is the, uh, the, the best practice is that to choose your time step in such a way that the solution converge between two and five iteration or one iteration. So usually the smaller the time step, the faster you will go converge here in that inner loop. At least it's going to do two iterations by the way. Okay, but probably the more CPU time will require. So you start increasing this one, it will take more iteration. So this is how you, you compute it, let's say, in a very, you know, in a not very uh, scientific way. No, this is just experience. Okay, so at this point, I would let it run, okay? It will run 100 seconds and then that's all. Okay, so let's wait for this for the solution. So see you later. Okay, so we're back. So that took about 18 minutes. So we're going to get kicked uh, to write down this time and then we compare with open phone. But clearly, as you recall, you run the same case uh, using a single block mesh is way much faster, even if we have similar number of cells. Also, during the simulation, you know, I, I left this one, the, the task manager on the screen. I like to always check the clock speed, remember this this problem. I always rant about this one because it's a big problem. You know, you get a new computer, you pay a lot for that computer or not for the computer, for the processor. And then there are some problems with the performance, efficiency, core and so. So I always check that one, but let's say that so far 
fluent. It's running fine after no I, I changed some setup in in in, uh, in Windows. The same will be with, with with Linux. Okay, so I don't want to talk any more about that. So we have a solution here. We have the monitor, CD, CL. We have the CFL number. So these are interesting because when we compare with flu with Open, you will see that uh, CFL is computed in different ways. So in theory, fluent. It will let, let us run with a much, much higher uh, CFL uh, time step for the same target CFL number. Let's say that if we want to target for a CFL number of, of, uh, of one here in Fluent, we can run with much higher uh, uh, time step. Uh, your receipt was exactly the same. No, this one, well, probably also you can disable this when you need it because you are not computing set, but this is just to show you that this it's not computing. So you, if you want to disable this one, which is advisable, go here and just click, click, disable that one, and that's all. Okay. So post processing, as I mentioned, is very particular for overset measures. It doesn't matter the software that you use, all of them, they will have the same issues. So that is another video. I will do it with Open Phone and Fluent, not to show you the differences, but pretty much the idea is the same. Probably here in Fluent might be a little bit easier because you have some options to, to post-process automatically this, but pretty much the same. Talking about this, the, the, the idea of the song, so recall that each song now has, I was talking about the ID, the same song ID that you have in, in Fluent. So you go here and sell songs, this ID 1720. You have it there, 1720. Why that number? I don't know. That is, that is fluent that put it there. I think somewhere here in the text user interface you can change it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then also you can access here in cell info. You have all the information re related to the cell or an overset mesh. So you have overset cell type, if you have some other. So later I'm going to talk. This is particular of open phone, no fluent, this cell type, because there are many cell types. So later will be another short video just to talk about the cell type in, 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 in Fluent and in open phone compari comparing one to one. As you can imagine, uh, uh, Fluent will give you access to more information, but probably unnecessary information instead of Fluent, you get just right the just the needed information. So you can check that one there, but then you can go to your solution. You have the velocity and there you go. You instead of your instability, beautiful solution. We don't have here to animate. I didn't save that. As I mentioned later, another video, I'm going to show you how to save that information, but uh, it's not a big deal here. It's not our, it's not in what, what we're interested in. So, but what I'm interested here in post-processing these values here. So to show you that here in Fluent, you have a very, very useful calculator. So let me go here. So you have here results so you can plot graphics, create a new one, so new, and you select where you want to plot, select the quantity and so on. So this is uh, very intuitive, vectors and so on. But what one that I want to show you is this, when you go into plots, FFT, okay, so this is to do signal pro processing, as you can imagine, but also you can post-process your original time signal. So you load your input file, and now just to mention something, whatever you're running in this case, all these files, so see that CD, CL, uh, you have max CFL. So remember when I created this monitor, this was created automatically, so you know the name. These are text files that you can read. So let's say here you have, okay, so there is no problem. And then you have also the automatic safe solution. You have it there and so on according to your frequency. So let's say that I want to post-process first the CD signal, that one there. You click there, it's going to open that file. It needs to be in this specific format, no? well, fluent format. So in theory, you can take any time signal and put it there. So there is no problem. Plot, modify input signal, and you go here, and there you go. You have your signal, okay? Now, for instance, you want to change access, you can come here and I want to change, you know, well, usually it's out of range, but I already play around there, apply plot here, and there you go. So you adjust your access. Okay. So feel free to play with that. And you have your signal there. And let's say that I want to compute my statistics in this signal. So remember that you always have that initial transient. I'm not interested in that initial transient. So see that you have the action click to range. I want to click to 60 seconds. That seems about since stabilized. Apply plot. Okay. So for some reason now it is 
slow okay there you go i know i don't know what happened there so and see that you have your signal and here you have your statistics so minimum maximum mean value so pay attention to this one then, then we compare with fluent and we do with open phone and then we do exactly the same with the leaf signal which as you can guess it is zero but let's say to do the sanity check you never know so we go here apply click to run so you can adjust your access there so minus two or you can put auto range so let me put auto range let's see what okay so it's putting that uh, and then click to range 60 so you see that as you keep the initial transient it's not going to be a value you know about zero and this is what we have now here mean value 0 0.02 so something close to zero 0 0.003 close to zero remember Numerical methods produce certain amounts of rubbish, and you see there is not a big deal. Probably also you need to get precisely the same window. So here, see that we have something else, but it doesn't matter. Then, for instance, you want to compute the frequency of the signal because it has a very specific frequency. You can come here and you can you have your power spectral density. You go here. Let me plot FFT. It will compute the FFT of the signal using the window that you de you define there so remember that we don't want that initial transient and see that you have this peak and usually that represents your frequency so here we need to adjust that axis x axis out to range and let me put one there so and there you go here you have your frequency so this frequency is about 0 0.8 okay so this will be i don't recall this was the drag no the lift signal okay and the drag signal Okay, and this is very important. Also, you need to know a little bit physics. It tends to be, in this case, because you have vortex shedding, it is twice this one. Okay, so let me go back here and let me, okay, sorry. So sometimes people think that that signal can be the same and use one and don't don't check the other. So be careful about that, that when you have a strong vortex shedding or vortices that are releasing from top and bottom surfaces so it will give you another frequency so as we go here and clearly i need to okay i need to subtract the initial transient as you see here it was a little bit crazy that signal so there are many techniques okay here to do that this analysis so you have here the window so there are different methods to to avoid problems in the wind and see here techniques so just read your your theory i don't want to go into details so now here click there so in this case a simple case so i don't need to to put any of those techniques and there you go so here we have my signal which is twice the other one okay so remember this because we have different frequencies okay uh, here you see you see that this one will be twice the leaf because how the vortex are, are released from the surface and let me go here you have here okay so you have a release so the drag it will be related here so you have a release one in the top and bottom instead leaf it is the overall quantity okay so this is what i want to address here okay we have overset meshes a little bit more complicated uh so get an idea get familiar very important the order how you read things so first read your background mesh here and then you start to append meshes because it's very important the first mesh that you read it have to be the, the background otherwise it is tricky to change the order okay it's not it's not as easy as going to grid priorities always usually the background mesh is the largest one not necessarily but usually the largest one and the one that you have inlets and outlets okay but not necessarily is, is the case but in my personal experience 98 percent of the time is it's like that or probably 99 okay i think i haven't done a, an application where i have an inlet in a in a component mesh okay so that's all okay thank you for attention in the video description you will have the link by the way to download this on to the previous video it's very important no just address the previous videos to understand a little bit these basic concepts and, and then we're going to keep moving with more and more uh, complex concepts. So thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy. Bye.